life can be painful. We all know that. But what if I told you that your pain could also be productive? Could God possibly be using your pain to propel you closer to your purpose? So here's the big question. Will you allow the pain in your life to be a prison or a passport? Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise right there. Do me a favor, jump up if you love Jesus and just look around you and tell him this will be a blessed week for you. This will be a blessed week for you. It will be a blessed week for you. All right, listen, while you're standing, there's something that's near and dear to my heart. I mean this for those of you who have been rocking with me for a while, you know from me, uh, I'm not big on offerings. I'm not really big on raising money. You know, I believe God's going to give us what he desires for us to have. And I believe that we all share purpose in our own hearts to give as God leads us. Somebody say amen. So I give not because I'm afraid of God. I give because I love God and I honor God. I'm going to laugh when I say this. I couldn't wait to tithe after God blessed me because the ability to tithe is the proof that God is doing what he said he was going to do in your life. So for those of you who rock with me, you know that you rarely ever really see me raise an offering. That's not my thing for the most part, but there is something that's special to my heart. Uh, and I mean this, and I want y'all to clap like y'all love it, like I love it. It's called Rock City Prep, man. I am excited. If you're watching online, look at the footage right here. We have an incredible school. I mean, it's an incredible school here in Birmingham, Alabama, Rock City Prep. God is doing some incredible things here for us. I just firmly believe, Dre, stay with me, that God is just up to some great things. And I believe that God is calling us now. And hear me when I say this. We have to impact our community on every level. Uh, not just spiritual, but I also believe financial. I also believe uh, economic impact. I also believe education. Somebody say education. And it means the world to me. When I tell you, man, this school is just blowing our minds the way our kids are just not just learning. This means a lot to me because I have a son who deals with Asperger's, uh, even how they're adjusting socially and how they're coming out of their shells and coming out of their cocoons and just blossoming and becoming social butterflies. So I need you to do me a favor. I need you to pull out your phone. Pull out your phone. Pull out your phone. I am watching you. Pull out your phone or I'm going to take it. Pull out your phone. Pull out your phone, pull out your phone. I want you to text ROAR, R-O-A-R, -R, ROAR, to 28950. If you're watching online and you're watching on YouTube, you can do it. If you swipe up, you see, you can still hear me. See there? I'm still talking. Text ROAR to 28950. When you do that, you're going to see an option. Here's my goal. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. My goal is that 250 people will partner with me with something like $20 a week or $10 a week, $5 a week. Maybe you got 99 problems and money ain't one. Go ahead and give me 100 grand real quick. Or you was a baller 20 minutes ago. Now you're not no baller, huh? Where all the bosses at? Where all the bosses at? To any dude in here want to give me 100000 if you come give me 100000 I'm pretty sure your future wife's going to be like, okay, okay, I see you. No, but seriously, so look, if you see that right there, I did the help for you. It's already on 20. So do me a favor. I need your help. Why, Pastor Mike? For the last year, all of my entrepreneurs and dreamers, hear your passion when I say this. For the past year and a half, I've basically been paying for this entire school out of my pocket. Why? Because it's hard to ask somebody to believe in something you're not willing to risk yourself in. So hear me when I say this. So I mean this. I'm tired. Tiffany been using me. They would call the church. They can, Pastor Mike, come sing. How much? And we would take what we would make and then we would bring it back to the school and boom, that would cover some of the teacher's salary. Then we would do this, that would cover some of this and some of that. I'm excited because my heart's desire is for our babies at our school to have everything they got over the mountain, under the mountain. And we are excited about that. I got a couple of my students here with me. Uh, they may be a little shy because they're standing up in front of a lot of people, but I want you to make some noise for them as they come. Y'all come up. Can I get a microphone? Can I get a microphone? Can I get a microphone? A microphone? Can I get a mic for him? So what's up, man? Look at you ready? I saw I saw your speech now. I saw your speech too. You ready? So I just want y'all to hear from them. This just means a lot to me. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me. Who wanna go first? You wanna you, you go ahead and go first? Oh, oh, get your sermon right. He wrote his. He he told me in the back he wrote his. So I'm excited about it. Just hear from him right quick. 
My name is Christian Walker, and I'm here at Rock City Preparatory Christian School going to the seventh grade. Yeah, let's go. When I first came to this school, I did not know much about the Bible than I thought. Miss Leslie taught me a lot about the Bible because I thought that the Bible was only just one book, but, the, but there's really 66 books of the Bible. Miss Aperio taught me about life and how there is a queen of England. And one thing I did not know and how the war affects with gas prices. Mr. B taught me a lot of math. <laughs> I did not a lot of math that I did not know. Mr. Ware proved to be to me be a good example on human kindness and how to dress sharp. Hey, let's go, my guy. Let's go, Tom. My name is Tara Fount, and I am moving to the sixth grade. Yeah. first came to Rock City Preparatory, I didn't know what to expect. But when I first met my teacher, at first I was nervous, but then the second day when I came to that school, I knew it was going to be all right. Because the time, because my teacher, she would help me in the time if I didn't know anything. Because she was an amazing teacher. She was awesome, and I loved her. But Miss Candice, she taught me a lot. I, a lot from the Bible, and I knew that I was gonna learn something new anytime I was with her and my teacher. Hey, hey! And I want to say this: I'm proud of them. So we do something, we do something called chapel. So this may be the pastor of the school. I don't know. You see, he didn't, he need his no. He just put, hey, God bless you. God bless. You. So hear me when I say this, man. It just means a lot to me for these young men and what we do. I mean, it's from the depths of my heart. I firmly believe in this school. Maybe you have some kids and you want them in a good Christian environment. So what are you about to see me doing? When you leave today, make sure you look at that building. Dre, can you throw that up there? We are starting renovations on the building way down the end on the hall. All of our big kids will be there. That would be their own facility where they have their classrooms, their little lounges, their computer lounges, different things like that. Uh, so I'm super duper excited about that. Uh, something you're going to see happen this summer as well is the gates that you come in because I really want to put an emphasis on security here at the school. So that gate right there will be locked the way you have to get buzzed in. And uh, this year is my heart's desire. That's why I'm asking for help this year because I want a police officer here all day while the kids are here. Is that okay? So, man, that just means a lot to me. God, God bless you guys. God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you guys. So I'm excited. Can we give them a hand real quickly? Go on, y'all good, y'all good. You, got, you killed it, you killed it, you killed it. So I mean this from the depths of my heart and, and, and I stand behind this. If I did not live all the way on 280, I would drive my kids over here every day. I mean it simply because um, I have my own thoughts on formal education. You know what I'm saying? But I'm more so big on community. Like, not just learning what they tell us to learn, but how do I apply this to life? And, and how do I become better? And so for me, with my boys, I believe in it so much that uh, one of the teachers who teach here, out of my pocket, I pay him, and he tutors my boys three days a week. So I believe in that. Why, Pastor Mike? Because hear me when I say this, I was one of those kids who didn't learn like everybody else learned. I know y'all like my sermons, but I was bad, boy. Hear me. And it wasn't bad because I was just a big <laughs> sugar head. Like, yeah, he was real bad. I was real bad. But it was because I learned different. You know, so I think my insecurity, because I didn't really catch it, it was easier to be a class clown than it was to raise my hand and say, I don't get it. I'm more of a visual learner. So if you can show it to me in a different way. And the reason I love it so much, because Elder Leslie and Elder Candace and Tina and Dr. B and all these people do, they slow it down for them. And that's why even if 100 kids register, we won't take 100 kids. Because to us, we're big on keeping these classrooms small enough so each child can get exactly what they need. So help me, man, if you don't mind, keep that link right there. Pray about it. Get with your husband. Get with your wife. 
uh, set it up for us. That'll mean so much to me. Let me show you how easy this is. If 250 people would just help me with $20 a week, I would be able to cover all of my salaries for the whole year. And that would just be so great for me and so great for the school and so great for all of our kids. Now we can start doing different things. We're, we're adding ninth grade this year. Uh, so we're adding the ninth grade basketball team. So that's going to be cool, ain't it, man? So listen, if there's any hoopers in here and you need a scholarship, you know, we're trying to get to the league around this thing. So I'm excited. All right. So thank you all for praying for me. Thank you for helping me. Who's ready to get a word today? Lift your hands. Say, Lord. Help me to become better in Jesus' name. Ouch! Sit down. We, we've been in the midst of this series entitled Ouch. We've been in the midst of this series entitled Ouch. And it has been blessing and transforming so many lives. I got phone calls coming in from across the country. All of my partners hit me like, hey, boy, you killing Y'all are killing right now. My friend, my brother, Pastor Mike Ty, hit me the other day. He FaceTimed me. He's like, boy, you are destroying this series. I just watched the whole series. I was like, yeah, man, that's what we do around here. <laughs> no, nah, but I was explaining to him, man, how this was really put in the spirit of those in our ministry and how I really believe God is calling us to another level. And I really want you to hear me when I say this, man. It may not feel good to you, but it's going to help you. Somebody just said, I receive all that. We, we started talking about pain. So I, I, I brought up five types of pain. I want to see who can help me. Uh, and I want you to just shout it out. Put it in the comments. I want your help right here. The first type of pain was genetic pain. Genetic pain, Leslie. Genetic pain. What does that mean? Genetic pain represents the pain we inherit. Genetic pain represents the pain we inherit. Do me a favor, whatever you have to do next Sunday, do not miss the sermon. Do not miss the sermon. I want you to tell your entire family to be by the computer. I'm teaching a lesson on genetic pain. So what are you about to see? I'm going to wrap it up today, and each week I'm going to go through each pain. Genetic pain. This is going to mess somebody up. Just because it runs in my family doesn't mean it has to run through me. Somebody should have said, I received that. It, it, it's called genetic pain. Then the second type of pain is what? Come on, say it like you mean it. Grudge pain, Leslie. Grudge pain. This represents the pain we hold on to. This represents the pain we hold on to. So many of us realize there are certain things that are handed down, then there are certain things we won't hand off. You keep holding on to the hurt of the past. You keep holding on to what somebody did or did not do for you. The third type of pain is group pain. Group pain. This represents the pain we are influenced by. Then the fourth type of pain is giant pain. That's the pain that transforms us. And the fifth pain is growing pains. This represents the pain we need for expansion. So after two weeks of talking about pain and don't make fun of me, somebody inboxed me and said, Pastor, you've been talking about you're going to get to this scripture for two weeks and ain't even got to the scripture yet. Well, you didn't finish your Netflix series in a day. Don't try to make me finish my sermon in a day. No, we're finally where we need to be. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Look at what it says. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziglag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into Negev and Ziglag. They had crushed Ziglag, burned it to the ground, and they had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing any one. The question I would like to ask you today, and I want you to be very honest with me, is how many people in this room and online feel like David that no matter what you do, you just can't avoid pain? Who heals me in here? No matter what you do, you just can't avoid pain. I'm going to say it so you don't have to say it. If it ain't one thing, who am I talking to in here? It seems like at every turn, David is having to go through something. I'm pretty sure by this point, David is saying, God, give me a break. Ain't it crazy how it seems like out of everybody in your circle, if something's going to jump off, it always jumps off 
with you. That you could be sitting there. I mean it from the depths of my heart. If somebody going to hit their toe on the table, it's going to be me. If I call and get my cable installed, I already know right now. Just clear my whole day because they're not going to be able to come in and just plug it in. They're going to get there. They're not going to find the line. Then they're going to realize ain't no cable on the whole block except my house. Then it's going to be some crazy. At most points in my life, I'm like, God, what is it about me that it always seems like I'm the one going through something it may be the fact that God is trying to approve you for something that is in your destiny that everybody around you won't be able to handle because there's something different on you I, I, I was tripping I was tripping I took the boys swimming took the boys swimming I called myself uh trying to be cute cute for my old lady got me some hoochie daddy shorts right so when it when it got me some hoochie daddy shorts so I come walking out at the pool like hey you see me don't you but but I made one mistake I, I began to put all these vaselines and different oils on because I wanted my legs to shine real nice I nobody told me that this stuff attracts mosquitoes it attracts uh, so I'm sitting at a whole while ah, ah, and I'm trying to get stuff off of me and I had no idea because there was something on me it was attracting things that were biting me and many of you if you don't want to go through anything you might not need to be praying God keep me from it what you might need to say is God take it off me because there is a price that comes with anointing. There is a price that comes with favor. There is a price that comes with being who you are. Please put this in your notes. It's not on the screen. Pain pays. Comfort cost. Jesus. Pain pays while comfort cost. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? I've discovered that in my life, that the areas of my life where I've had to endure, I, I earned something from that trial. But the seasons of my life where I, were con where I was content, these are these comfortable, it ended up costing me something. It ended up costing me something. My, my, might, I suggest, might I suggest when we look at Peter when he steps off of the boat, when we look at Peter when he steps off the boat, we can argue that uh, he fell in the water, he drowned, could have drowned, Jesus picks him up. What do I see? I see his pain pays. He got a lesson on trusting God that you cannot learn from comfort. Hear me, Mike McClure. And what do we realize? I need you to catch this. The Bible talks about something that I want to share with you called the theology of suffering. The theology of suffering. Put this in your notes. What is the theology of suffering? The theology of suffering suggests, watch this, Scripture consistently asserts that there are two things about suffering. Number one, suffering is unavoidable. Suffering is unavoidable. But here's the second thing that blesses my life. But it's also not unprofitable. So suffering because of human fall, because of humanity sin, the Adamic fall, what Adam did in the garden, suffering enters into the world. So suffering, therefore, is unavoidable, but it is also not unprofitable. Make that make sense, Pastor Mike. I'm going to try my best not to shout. Just because God didn't cause it doesn't mean he can't use it. That can preach, can't it? Just because God didn't cause it doesn't mean he can't use it. See, this is why the devil can't stand you. I'm, I'm going to have church, but I'm going to preach to y'all. because th th This is why the devil can't stand you. Because the devil can't figure out how you keep messing up. But God don't necessarily clean up your mess. He uses your mess. Oh, okay, all right, I got to put scripture on it. And we know. That God, Michael, causes all things to work together. Okay, so I got to free you. This is my problem with new school preachers. We are so ready to shout that we leave out important parts. So now we have a generation of Christians who are being raised on an incomplete gospel. And when you believe an incomplete gospel, you become an incomplete Christian. What does that mean, PMJ? So we say stuff, baby girl, like, and we know God causes all things to work together for my good. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, and for we know 
God calls us all things to work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. If you fail to consistently love God, you default on the fact that it's going to work together for your good. See, this is for three of y'all who, if the truth be told, it's some stuff that jumped off in your life and you still trying to figure out how all that stuff came together. You still trying to figure out because truth be told, you were on the phone saying, no, this is it right here. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how God is going to do it. Thank you, grandmama. But he may not come when you want him, but he's an on time, Jay. God, yes, he is for we know no put that in your word no Th that's a beautiful word no that that translates to mean by definition through experience for we know okay all right uh, only a couple of y'all gonna catch this see it's certain people you know of then it's certain people you know uh, who y'all gonna sleep <laughs> so it's certain people you, you know keys from a song so yeah 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 i know that then i mean you know you remember songs like yeah oh, oh, yeah i know see because there's certain people you know of then it's certain people you've had an interaction and a history with that you know know them okay i want to free you in the hood when something's good you got to say it twice oh that was good good no you no no you mad mad no see that's really a biblical principle you don't understand this is why the scripture says barely barely but biblically that's called the emphatic principle that whenever you say something twice you're putting emphasis on it that's why king james would say barely barely now you say you mad mad no so 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 when you no know, know somebody that that means you've had enough run-ins with them that you know exactly how they move michael I'm in the wrong church. You know exactly how they move. Many of you are panicking in your pain because you know of him. You don't know know him. Michael, some of y'all can't even shout in church because you're thinking about what you left at home because you only know of him. While six of us in here like, because we know know him. Look at your neighbor and say, stop tripping over whatever you in. I know know him. He'll be a doctor in a sick room. Mother to the motherless. Father to the fatherless. Bridge over troubled water. You ought to just jump up and shout, I no, 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 no. Little monitor. And we no, no. That God calls us, this is heavy, all things to work together for my good. Did, did you know when they were creating the microwave, Brandon, did you know when they were creating the microwave, the microwave was an accident? He was trying to create something else and notice he kept melting stuff. Thus, he worked together and called it microwave. God is saying the message you keep making, I love you. And here's what I love so much about God. Here's what I, see, let, let's just play devil's advocate. Let's say every time you mess up, it puts a border between you and him. So let's just say you woke up this morning and told one lie, border. Then you did something else crazy, border. So let's, let's just say by, 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 by this time, it's 20 borders between you and God. And the reason the devil can't stand you is because God knows you. He know, know you. He, no, no, God, he said, I know every hair on your head. He said, I know you're good and you're bad. I know, know you. And the devil is in hell. Like, do, do you see this? He's like, yeah, I see it. But, but God... Okay, you missed it. He, he sees your faults. Okay. All right, I need somebody to help me preach like I feel it. Okay, so he sees all the wrong you done. He sees all the crap you did. He sees all the lies you told. He sees all the beds you crawled out of. He sees all the stuff you drunk, all the stuff you smoked, all the lies you told, all the mess you been in. And the devil like, oh, they, they done now. But God looks... How you gonna sit in here like you got your whole life together? I need a hundred folk to just type, he looked beyond. The reason I am blessed is not because I'm that good. It's because he's just... And we know God causes all things to work together for the good and who love. But, but here, here's something else. Genesis 50 and 20, what the enemy... See, I, I like this row. Forget the church. I like, see what the enemy 
meant for evil. The Lord. Y'all don't know when to have church. Y'all too educated. I miss the old church. No, no. What the enemy meant for evil. God would work it out for your good. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is when it comes to you and God, suffering is unavoidable. Hear me when I say this. See, here, here's, why, here, here's why so many people are frustrated with the church. Because they saw mama suffer and they can't figure out this is called the odyssey. This messed me up when I was in school. I was studying at Yale, and it messed me up when my professor went through this. He says, I want to teach y'all something called the Odyssey. And I was like, whoo, th this is the study of evidential evil that, that if we serve a good God, why does he allow a grocery store to get shot up? <laughs> See, these are the things we got to grapple with. If God is so good, why does all this bad stuff keep happening? If he then was God, couldn't he just stop it? There is God's perfect will and his permissive will. And what we don't ever want to address is that some of this evil, let's not call it some of it, all of this evil that we see is a direct reflection of what happened in the garden. So suffering is not always personal. Sometimes suffering is corporate. There will be seasons where you go through something. Then there are seasons where we go through something. Then there are seasons where they go through something that impact how you see what you're going through. And there's far more to this life than trusting God. And one of my missions is to be um, um, sort, sort of a translator. That's what I feel like God called me to do. How do I take these hard truths of the Bible and make them um, uh, uh, understandable? Or, or how can I be conversant about things that we, we, we really don't understand? And one of my biggest gripes about the past, I believe we spent too much time in church growing up hearing about how we should trust God. Therefore, since all we heard was trust Him, I want, I want to really help you. You would go through something. And they would look at you and just say, we well, got to trust God. <laughs> hey, weeping man do it for the night. It's 1146. I got six hours left. Like, so come on, give me some more. And, and so, so hear me, there's more than just trusting Let's put scripture on it. Philippians 129. Philippians 129, all right? There's far more to this life than trusting in Christ. There's also suffering for him. Why didn't nobody read us that scripture? The only time we hear about Philippians is I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You put that scripture on stuff that you ain't even supposed to put it on. Girl, I'm trying to get in this dress. I can do all things through Christ, <laughs> which strengthens me. You know, I got pulled over, I gotta go to court. I'm gonna get, I can do all, th no, no. There's some other things. Paul, that talented tent maker from Tarsus, Paul, who's one of the first uh, apostles of the Bible, who goes from city to city helping start churches, which is why most churches look like tents. Because Paul was a tent maker, so he basically built, that's crazy, what, he, what his occupation was. So now you see how we mimic something, not even on the origin. So, so what happens is, Paul says, no, there's more to life than just trusting in Christ. Suffering for him, that's critical. Suffering for him. See, why is it, I didn't say this at the first service. It, it slipped my mind. I want to say it to you guys now. Why is Paul talking about suffering for him? It's so cold-blooded. Because they are, they are talking of stoning Paul. All of the preachers in the city can't stand Paul. You want to know why? Because they were preaching something. You can put this in your notes if you want. Called the theology of glory. Now, the theology of glory was they would sit around and brag on how many people they got saved. 
You caught that. So they would say, hey, you know, I got 10 people saved this week. Then another person would come and say, I got 100 people saved this week. Then another person would come and say, 345 people got baptized because of me. And then they would look at Paul and say, well, how many you got? So then Paul would look, let me take it deeper. It wasn't just coming to the altar either. They would line people up and circumcise them. So the theology of glory, they would brag about how many people they circumcised because then you had to circumcise yourself to sort of prove your faith. Then Paul says, no, you don't have to cut me. You don't have to cut my flesh. I've been crucified with Christ. So then they look at Paul and say, whoa, no, no. Then Paul says, no, from now on, this is heavy, don't trouble me with these things. For I bear on my body, look at what Paul says, the scars that prove, listen to this talk, that prove I've been with Jesus. So what Paul is saying is, you bragging on who you cut. I can brag on the fact that I've been cut for him. So there's more than just trusting God. At a certain point, if you trust him, you're going to have to suffer for him. Oh, y'all don't like me today. Y'all do not like me today because you want me to tell you serving God going to be roses and bubbles. You want me to tell you that when you put your tithe and offering in that bucket, it's going to be a million dollars waiting on you. That's what you want. You want me to stand here and look at you and say, by the time you get home, yes, God, I feel it now. Something is going to be in the mailbox with your name on it. I dare 300 people to just look at me and shout, by the time, yeah, I get home. And all that is good when it's in its will. But what we should also say is there are things that transpire that if you are not careful, you will put everything on the devil and not even realize that some of this just comes because you connected to Christ. I'm, I'm in the wrong church today. Hear me when I say this, this is cold-blooded, why? Because look at Galatians 3 and 4. Galatians 3 and 4. Are you watching online? Look at what it says. Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely... It was not in vain, was it? Can I ask you a question? Did you really go through all that for nothing? You mean to tell me you went through one of the craziest six months to a year of your life only to repeat it? You mean to tell me we had to fast, pray, throw holy water and oil on you to get you out that relationship and you go pick another version of them? You mean to tell me he came through at the last minute and paid the bill only for you to need him to do it again this month? Surely, Michael, you didn't go through all that for nothing. Okay, let's look at the message version. Message version, let me put this question to you. How did your new life begin? Was it by working your heads off to please God or was it by responding to God's message to you? Are you going to continue this craziness? Watch this. For only crazy people would think they could complete their own efforts what was begun by God. If you weren't smart enough or strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you would be, you could perfect it? Here it is. Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing. And the question I want to ask today, I'm grateful you survived, but what now? Can you put this in your notes? It's going to be very simple, but I think it's powerful. God's plan of survival for your life is not a period. It's a comma. <clears throat> your testimony is not supposed to be only I made it out. It's supposed to be, I made it out, and now. But you want to know what your pain do? Your pain makes you shout over an exit and don't even realize God gave you an entrance. I'm in the wrong church today. It, it makes you, can, can I free you? If you walk out the sanctuary, you just exit it. Can I free you? There's an exit sign over that door, which means it's telling you, and by law, it has to light up. <clears throat> by law it has to light up 
And by law, if all the power goes out in the building, it has to have its own battery so that when life gets dark, you can still find your way out. Put scripture on it. There is no temptation which is common to man that God will not provide a way of escape, which means that you lied to yourself when you said you were stuck in it. It is impossible for you to be stuck when it's a whole book called Exodus. <laughs> the book of Exodus is God's resume on how he always makes a way. You not stuck, you stand. I'm a clap for myself since y'all mean mugging me. You ain't stuck, but I don't know what to do. I'm stuck on this job. No, you're not stuck on that job. The exit may be painful, but by faith, the same God that kept me before this job will keep me after this job. There is always a choice. The problem isn't we don't have a choice. The problem may be the choice is just too painful. <laughs> and for many of you, hear me, I don't want to give you a lie. I'm going to say something that you need to hear. It might hurt. I know you love them. Y'all been together two years now and you done told yourself, I don't want to start over. I'd rather just stay in this perpetual cycle of foolishness. I, I'd just rather stay comfortable because who, who, who going to want me now? It may hurt, but you got to have faith that what God got for you is better than this. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. But I feel a sneaky suspicion, 10 of y'all pulling on my faith right now. And you saying, Pastor Mike, I've been wrestling. You want to know the worst place in life to be? It's not when you wait on an answer from God. It's when you got the answer. And now you fight because you don't even want to pull the trigger. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm trying not to shout because I don't want you in my business. But this Negro finna make me scream today. Because it's some stuff I've been wrestling with. And I've been afraid because I know it's going to be painful. But God told me to tell you, if you step by faith. I got you. I got you. It might hurt. It might hurt. It may hurt. But at a certain point in your life, you have to make the God decision. Oh, my God. Your inability to trust God speaks volumes whether you know it or not. Yeah, so, so, so if Xander, my oldest son, if he walks around the house stomping and fussing, if he walks around the house mad and angry all the time, and I'm like, Xander, huh, 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 even though he's never said nothing out the way to me, his actions are disrespectful. See, see, my boys, sometimes Xander Mike Mason don't even realize certain times when I say, hey, and they're like, I didn't do nothing. They don't even realize the reason I said, hey, because I couldn't discern their action. Hey, pick that up. Hey, I, I couldn't discern the action. So I want to get your attention so I can clearly see if we got a problem. Because if we got a problem, I'm going to fix it. Do you hear me? I'm going to fix it. And many of you don't realize your actions are counseling your prayers. They don't get it, X. So, so, so they don't get it. So, 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 so you, you pray. Father God, I'm trusting you like never before. I'm leading and depending on you, God. I know you're going to make a way for me. I know you got me, God. <sighs> <sighs> don't, don't nobody say nothing. So, so. So are you bold or bitter? I, I'm confused. B because who you are when you're on your knees praying aren't who you are when you're walking around with the attitude. And I'm trying to figure out now which one do you want God to respond to? What you saying out your mouth or what you saying with your life? Ouch! 
Yeah. Don't just tell me you love me. Show it. There are four kinds of experience. I got to stop. I got 10 minutes. Four types of experiences that God used to shape our life. Four types. Number one is personal. Personal experiences. I want to say this to you. Stop running and being ashamed of your personal experiences. Hear me. Yes, you may have a past. Yes, you may have done some stuff. May, you may not be proud of it. Hear me. If it's something that's not going to impact everybody, at a certain point, God allowed you to go through it so you can learn something from it. I can't wait to, I, I can't wait to God just gives me, put this word in your notes, hermeneutic. Hermeneutic. I'm going to spell it for you. I got you. I got you. I got you. H-E-R-M-E-N. I'm, I'm reading it right. M-E-N. E-U-T-I-C. So hermeneutic is a scholar, biblical word that we use in, in seminary. It, it, it means interpretation. If you want to sound deep when you get to work tomorrow, be like, man, that staff meeting was crazy. What's your particular hermeneutic on what he was saying? <laughs> oh, that's going to mess him up. In the middle of staff meeting, just raise your hand. Hey, hey, Brad, how you doing? I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to do, what, what's your particular hermeneutic to everything that's going on right now? They're like, come again, interpretation. Inter her so hermeneutic is your interpretation. Which is why when we do Devo Energy, I fuss if it ain't enough women on it. See, because I need a womanist hermeneutic. See, how a woman who deals with the period sees the woman with the issue of blood is different than a man who's never had a period. So I'm going to be like, she in pain. The woman going to be like, no, no, you don't get it. Her hermeneutic is different. Which is why I'm trying my best to raise up so many people who are unashamed of the gospel. I want to do stuff like sort of how they do TED Talks. I want to do rock talks or what I call the rock speech when the scripture says, if you don't cry out, the rock will cry out. So I want to have these little sessions where people are just come and share from their personal experience. See, I want God. I, I need a minute. I got Pastor Hollis. He's smooth. I got Pastor D. He's strong. I need a thug. I, I need like tats everywhere. I need somebody. Hey, do me a favor. Open up your Bibles, bro. John chapter 2. Real talk. And what I'm trying to get y'all to realize is, you know, the devil my up, and I don't like that. I want to be like, I'm a little scared, but I'm a little blessed, too. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what to do with that. Devil be bothering me. I'll put, drop, 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 drop. I need all that right there. Look at some of y'all like, where he at, Jesus? Where he at? Is he saved? Is he saved? I need all that. You want to know why? Here's why I need it. I, I need it because when, when I go stand on a block and I'm speaking to these young boys, my hermeneutic ain't going to get it. I need somebody to stand up. Hey, y'all, listen to me, y'all. I, I, I done did this, whoop de whoop I done whoop de whoop I, I, I sound like my homeboy from Facebook. He taught me. I, I done did whoop de whoop and the whoop de whoop and, You know, whoop de whoop and, and, and I'm telling y'all, man, ain't nothing out here for it. See, see, once they do that, then I'm going to be able to say, and here's why God loves you. We are, free. we are freed by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. See, people going to have you ashamed of it. No, people will. People will. Number two is our vocational and educational experiences. So we learn, made from our personal experience. Secondly, we learn from our vocational educational experiences. Number three, vocational educational is your work relations, your, your, uh, your schooling, everything you've learned. This is how we learn. Four things that God used to learn. Our personal experiences, what we learn in school, what we learn on our jobs. Number three, our spiritual experiences. I can't wait till this winter. I always preach with the seasons. So when it's spring, I'll preach something kind of like this. In the summertime, we're doing something called R&B, Songs That Changed Our Life. It's going to be a love, sex, and relationship series. It's going to be crazy in here all summer. So then after then in the fall, I'm going to do Impossible, uh, How God Always Steps In. Then once it gets cold, I'm going to do this whole study on theology and spirit. We're going to dive deep into the Bible, what the Bible says about this, lost books of the Bible. Who are these? What were the Anunnaki? What was this? When the text says this, how does this move? See, I, I want to talk about stuff that culture's talking about. Because if we don't talk about it, then you're left to believe it must be right. It's your spiritual experiences. You got me? Your spirit. What did I learn spiritually? And most of us struggle with spiritual experiences because of the people we met in spiritual places. 
I'm going to leave that alone. Number four, painful experiences. Now, here's what we got to realize, that there is power in our pain. Oh, that's rich, Michael. That is rich. David is known as a worshiper. So we see David pouring out his praise and don't realize he's poured out of his pain. You helping me preach today, girl. He poured out of his pain. Praise without pain is just a performance. Do me a favor. Somebody clap your hands. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Throw your hands up like this. All y'all just mimicked praise. It was empty because it was mimicked. It was rehearsed. It was planned. When praise is authentic, it comes from a place you can't explain. And David was greatly distressed. When we meet David in this text with my last seven minutes, he's greatly distressed. David is tripping. He is tripping. His whole life ain't been nothing but one cycle of pain. His mom and daddy, well, we don't know if his mama don't like him, but the mama don't ever say nothing. And the text don't tell us what his mama said, so I'm left to think, did the mama like him? Did she co-sign what the daddy said? Daddy didn't like him. Can you imagine two people get together and decide to have a baby and it's you? You didn't ask to come here. They did something without your consent that caused you, that, now I'm here, boom. I get here and you got a problem with me. How both of y'all two grown people got a problem with me because y'all got issues with yourself. David gets here, the prophet shows up and says, the king is in your house. I want you to get in David's head. The king is in your house. He says, I'll tell you what, bring me your sons. And all, he brings all his sons but David. Let's play devil's advocate. Imagine David out there in the field with the sheep and he looking like, what they doing? Or let's just say he's so used to their rejection that he see them doing stuff like, I ain't going over there, they don't want me here anyway. Because sometimes pain teaches us. I never forget when I pledged Cap Alpha Psi, right? I pledged Cap Alpha Psi, and it, it was hell on earth. Man. I mean, it was 22 of us when we started. I was like number 13. By the time we got done, it was only two left. I was the ace, all right? I had one of the mindsets that once it get going, ain't no quit. Ain't no stopping at this point. And it was hell. I'm talking about we went through it. We went through it. I never forget, at a certain point, nothing hurt no more. They would slap you in the chest. Boom. They call it chest fire. Get some of this chest fire. <laughs> He's a cold crew. <laughs> oh my God. At a certain point, I just stop feeling. I can't, I can't. It's for some people who don't pledge, you know, at a certain point, you're just like, let's get this over with. Let's go. Let's, it's almost like I had to come numb to it. Some of y'all have been hit emotionally and spiritually, financially mentally, socially, so long, you're just numb to it now. Folk lying on you don't even bother you. You hear mess, don't even flinch. Somebody tell you they leave, and you're like, all right, bye. Then they look at you like, you don't care? No. I don't, I don't have the ability to care anymore. I, I, I try. David is going through all this. Daddy don't think he's good enough. He finally get a friend because his brother's tripping. His friend's name's Jonathan. Jonathan's daddy is Saul, who's the king. And now Jonathan's daddy don't like him. David ain't doing nothing but what he's supposed to do. All of a sudden, people walking down the street, Saul has killed his thousands. Oh, but David killed his tens of thousands. Saul is cute. Oh, but David, he fine, fine. And Saul is hearing this. So Saul starts throwing spears at him. What do you do, Pastor Mike, when at every turn you fight him? At every turn. He finally runs away from Saul. Now he's hiding with Goliath's family. Think of this. He kills Goliath. Saul ends up not liking him. Now he's hiding with Goliath's people. He in so much pain, the only place of peace he could find was with enemies. He gets back from battle and everybody family gone and everybody house is burnt down. The text says David was greatly distressed. He is stressed out. 
And before I let you leave today, here's where I need to see what you do. Because when you become greatly distressed, what do you do? What do you pull on? Where do you go? Okay, I got to be very, very balanced right here. For, for, for fellas, now you shut down. Well, Pastor Mike, at least I ain't cussing nobody out. Sometimes that hurts worse. What do you do? What do you do? Well, I just go get me something to drink. And then what does that lead to? Well, I just, I just have to smoke something to calm my... Then what does that lead to? Well, I have to call so-and-so because they know how to... Then what does that lead to? I just add the cart. Then what does that lead to? David says, I need to give y'all a model on what to do when you stressed out. Help me, Holy Ghost. The text says, but David encouraged himself. Now, here's where I want to be somewhat disciplined because I could tell the whole church up right here. I can go into this whole funky run on how you have to talk to yourself. And you have, sometimes you have to look in the mirror and tell yourself. No, but, but if we have good church, you're going to miss the moment. So here's the question that nobody ever told us. What does encourage yourself mean? Because if you had to think with, your, with, with the normal eye, you would say he talked to himself. So let me show you what encourage yourself is. You can make it. What scripture is that? <laughs> Positivity don't trump spirits. No, you just need to be positive. What scripture is that? No, I need word, Jesus Christ. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and, and powers and where? So hear me. Me saying you're going to make it ain't enough. Whose word is that? Whose word is that? I just need you to be strong. What does that mean? Because if I'm not mistaken, the Bible told me when I'm weak, he's strong. So you telling me to be strong is antithetical to the text. Because God's telling me in the text, it's okay for me to be weak in him. No, so what you're really telling me is be strong because you don't have the strength to hold me. So when you tell me to be strong, what you're saying is, I ain't got enough for me, and I, always, I know I ain't got enough for you, so you're going to have to just deal with it by yourself. So mentally, how do I encourage myself? Put this in your notes. You encourage yourself, Jesus, by renewing your mind. I'm going to say it slow. Renewing your mind, that's the first phase. Led by the Holy Spirit. Second phase, third phase, in God. See, that's what we preach wrong. And David encouraged himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. There is not enough of money that can encourage yourself. Whenever we do one service and we go downtown to the arena, y'all see me, what, four, five thousand people there? You can't even get in the building. People all up in the Raptors. And those be the worst nights of my life. Them be the nights where I just stay up all night and I have to, okay, God, come on. I speak, I speak life. I speak faith. Because my mind, insecurity start rolling in. Did I do this good enough? Did this happen? Hear, hear me? There is not a... There, uh, the stuff you chasing ain't going to bring the peace you think. No. Blessings make sick people sicker. But if I give an addict a million dollars, he will kill himself. If I give my 15-year-old a Bentley, he'll tear it up. Giving you stuff ain't going to fix you. I got to renew my mind. So watch this. So paint the picture. I, I got to stop. Paint the picture. David get back from battle. I, like, I want you to really see this. They just won. So imagine you just got the promotion. You just got the job. You just got a check. You just got the... So whatever you believe in God for, imagine that. Then the moment you pull up at your crib, it's on fire. This the picture. 
So he pull up to the house. Oh, this can preach. He see the smoke down the street. What's that? As he pull up, all he see is fires. Yet he hears no screaming. Which means either my babies and my wife dead or they gone. So all of a sudden now all you hear is other men screaming. Because they checking their tents and finding out their family's gone. Oh, oh, oh. And you walking through, now your family gone and, and you nervous. Then you hear whispers. Because the scripture says they were talking about killing him. How this go wrong for us? Yet yeah, you blame me. Be careful when you're connected to people who don't have the maturity to take responsibility for what they did. Everything is your fault. So hear me. He, imagine looking, he sees his kids' clothes but no kids. He sees his wife, jewelry, no jewelry, his house on fire. And then all of a sudden, he turned and looked, and his people looking at him like, we got to kill him. I, I don't have a prayer partner because they crying. My, but I, I don't have anybody to turn to because I'm, I'm in the enemy's camp. If I run home, Saul going to kill me. If I stay here, they going to kill me. All of a sudden, he said, David, mm, encouraged him. This scripture would be so easy to preach if the scripture said, and David was stressed out, and then somebody leaned over and said, David, you got this. God said, no, I want them to know very clear. This is cold what I'm going to say. Having somebody in your life is a blessing, not a requirement. We're so quick to talk about who left. When is the last time you told somebody thank you for staying? Especially what it takes to deal with you. David renewed his mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak and declare by faith. Ah, yeah, feel his mind. He began to speak word over his own mind. He began to speak life over his own mind. This is so critical. He renewed, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He encouraged himself. I'm going to stop. So what did he do? Number one, he encouraged. David had an internal and an external conversation, Leslie. What does that mean? Encouraging himself was for alignment. Inquiring to God was for advancement. He said, he said, Lord, shall I, this can preach. These band of raiders have took everything we have. Shall I go get it? And the Lord said to him in verse 8, go after them. This can preach. You will recover everything that was taken from you. I'm going to stop right there because that's enough to tell the whole church up. Because while David is talking to God about his pain, God starts talking to him about his promise. God, D David says, I done lost everything. Should I go get it? God says, you're going to recover everything you, listen to the scripture, put, put verse 8 on the screen if you don't mind. Verse 8, and the Lord said, yes, go after them. You shall, this is cold-blooded, recover everything that was taken from you. That's critical. Y'all don't know when to shout. You shall recover everything that was taken from you. Your family going to get it in a minute. You shall recover everything that was taken, watch this, from you. If I had time, I would tell you at the end of this story, everybody got their stuff back. Everybody didn't pray. Everybody didn't go to God. But because one person learned how to express his pain, everybody connected to them got what they was missing. Look at me. Look at me. My brothers, my sisters, this is why it's so, this is why it's so important that you grow up. When I say grow up, that is not an insult. I'm going to say it again. I ain't saying grow up. I'm saying grow up. I'm saying that because, watch this, what if everybody's recovery is based on your maturity? Can I ask you a question? This is rich. 
if I get irritated and finally lose it, all this comes crumbling down. That's so unfair to me sometimes. Because there are things I want to say. I have moments where I'm like, you know what, I'm tired. I'm tired. And I have to go into my prayer closet and say, Lord, help me. Even to the point that I may view, I may be viewed now compared to how crazy I used to be as soft. You want to know why? Back then, I only saw what I was building. Now I see what I'm holding. See, 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 when I was building, it was all about tearing the ground up. Now I realize one wrong step. I told lady, 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 my client, we've been in a battle in my house, right? One that I won, by the way. So we've been in a battle in, over the closet. So I be coming off the road sometimes. I have these suitcases and I don't be having time to pack. I, can, I need to do a better job, point blank. But some kind of way, everything that I've been wearing just ends up on the floor. So, so she had been telling me to get it out the room. Then she called herself being funny and just threw it all in my closet. So now I can't even see the floor and it's just clothes everywhere. So I made a decision. I'm not picking it up. This has been going on for three months, three, four months. I'm not picking it up. You pick it up. I ain't picking it up. You. So I, I'd rather go to Walmart every Monday and get my undergarments, t-shirts, and jeans. Hear me? Before I pick them clothes, I was, I, this is World War III for me. Hear me? So finally I get home the other day and she done, I went like, hey, something, I got you. I, I'm going to get it right for you. This is the last time. And I, and I was just so grateful. So grateful. I was wrong. I'm a grown man. I need to keep, pick up my own clothes. I, that ain't, that's sexist. No, she don't have to. She choose to. You got me? You know, so, so I was like, I, I just felt like hard as I be working. Just, just knock that out. I'm sorry. Yada, yada, yada. But then she did something that just irked me. Instead of just putting the clothes up, she just folded them. And then she just put them all in one big giant stack. Who's ever did that to where once you leave it, anybody touch it, what's going to happen? Whole thing going to fall over. So this morning I'm looking, I'm like, I, I was like, babe, uh, what am I supposed to do? She's like, it's right there. I already cleaned up your closet. I ain't going to pick it out for you too. So I'm in there trying, playing Jenga, trying to, <laughs> trying to slide this one little white feet out. Like, uh, uh, everything come falling down. Everything come falling down. I had a decision to make. Do I now fuss that it fail, or do I now fold it back up? Can I ask you a question? How many times you want him to clean your closet? How many times? As for me in this season of my life, this one on me. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us the strength to see past our pain. God, you blessed some of us with some really good people in our life that we just took advantage of, or maybe we just didn't view them as the people we wanted in that season. Or sometimes, God, we just take them for granted. Sometimes having good people in your life makes you believe that they'll always be in your life. God, so many times in our lives that we've taken you for granted. Today, right now, in this moment, this minute, this hour, this second, I ask for strength to properly view myself the way you view me. God, the, 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 the bad part about pain is that sometimes we only see ourselves through our hurt. We see ourselves as our mistake. So in this moment, God, if you don't mind, <laughs> purge us with hyssop that we shall be clean. Wash us that we shall be whiter than snow. And God, after you do that, Help us see that. Because you saved us a thousand times. God, you've healed us a thousand times. You, you've done everything we needed. Now, God, I ask that you do it again. Father, my, answer, my prayer is very simple. Help me to trust you when the answer you give me is not the answer I want. Help me to be faithful when where you tell me to go is not the place I prefer. It's in Jesus' name. And everything's, and everyone said, amen. Clap your hands if you love Jesus.
Come on, stand to your feet with me if you don't mind. Did you get anything out of that today? Did you get anything out of that today? Hey, man, listen, before you leave, uh, give me two minutes. Before you leave, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's helping. They shot me a quick message while I was preaching, just smiling, smiling, smiling. So that means a lot of y'all probably helped. Do me a favor. It would mean the world to me, even if you didn't put nothing in the offering today. If you just helped us with the school, I mean it's from the depths of my heart. I really believe in it. It means a lot to me. And I would just love to just do something for our community that's for us, by us, and it's done in excellence. I just want to break this whole bootleg mindset of not being able to be supported mindset off our people in Jesus' name. I just want to do something in excellence, and I'm just so proud of it. Also, I gave you a communion when you came in. Don't open it. I want to pray over it. Uh, if you have any kids, I'm going to take communion with my kids and my whole family today when we get home. So do me a favor. If you need a communion in the bucket in the back on your way out, there are some more communions. Grab a couple, and it would be good. Listen to me, families. If you just sat down today and said, we're going to take communion together as a family. And just explain to them what it means and the grace of God and the power of God and the love of God that is on our lives. Also, all my fellas, give me a what, what? Next Monday, next Monday is our Rockefellers. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Mike Moore at Faith Chapel for allowing us to just get the whole facility. We're going to be able to play basketball, bowling, a couple PS4s, 5s, all that good stuff. So I want to see all my men. Ladies, do me a favor. Don't ask nobody to bring you no Popeyes before they leave and now y'all fussing because he was excited to come and you done ruined it. Just leave that man alone next Monday. Tell your man, go hang with PMJ. Uh, it's going to be a powerful time. I can't wait. I'm going to be balling. I can't wait to ball. My squad going to take home uh, that cash prize in Jesus' name. Also, if you want to get saved, here's a good place to clap. 215 people gave their life to Jesus last month. That's so powerful to me. So listen, if you're watching online and you want to give your life to Christ, if you're in the room and you want to give your life to Jesus, all you have to do is text Get Life to 28950. Get Life to 28950. I had someone drive in from out of town today to Birmingham. Where are you? Right here. That's where from Tuscaloosa? No, um, Memphis. Mississippi. Where you came from? Oh, Olive Branch, way out here. Mississippi. Who said something back there? I thought I heard somebody. Let's stone. I saw you on IG, Stone Mountain right there. Isn't it a blessing when people drive from Georgia and Mississippi just to come to church? That's crazy, man. Thank you guys so much. It means the world to me. Do me a favor. If you're watching online and you ever want to come be a part, be our guest. We would love to have you. Also, last but not least, in the morning, 721 a.m., Devo Energy. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be such a blessing. Father God, I thank you in advance for what you're doing. I thank you for those who are about to give, those who may not have it but want to give. I thank you for every brother in this room, God, to so give him everything he needs to be the man you called him to be. I thank you for every sister in this room. Equip her to be everything you called her to be and then some. Now, God, we pray a special prayer. Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen.